Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your Oshkosh City Manager. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Community Media and City Manager, Mark Roloff. Thank you for joining us on your City Manager's Report, your source for all things local, hot topics going on right here in Oshkosh, as well as a preview of the upcoming council, City Council meeting agenda. I'm your host, Emily Mikowski, joined as always by your City Manager, Mark Roloff. And Mark, thank you as always for joining us today. Oh, great to be here, Emily. So we're going to go ahead and dive into our hot topics for the day. Uh, for the first half of the show, take a little break, and then we'll take a look at the upcoming meeting agenda for Tuesday, June 9th, 2015. So, Mark, first thing that we want to talk about, we're kicking it off on an exciting note here. Uh, last Saturday, May 30th, actually, uh, we had an event at the field operations facility, and it was kind of an open house. We had a ribbon cutting, um, and we, you spoke at the ribbon cutting as well as Steve Cummings, Mayor Steve Cummings, um, and I was able to, to round up a few people after the, the ceremony and chat with them for a little bit. So why don't we take a look at what they had to say? Well, it's really exciting to finally get the building open and let the public come and tour and see what uh, what we've done to improve our ability to provide efficient services for the citizens of Oshkosh. It is just such a, a beneficial change to have uh, a new facility like this. The, the efficiencies are just, you can't hardly imagine how hard it was to work in some of the other facilities that, that they had to work in. The maintenance facility was too small, way too small. A lot of time, a lot of dedication goes into the project and really hats off to the city. There are a lot of city employees uh, took personal charge. When you look around, you just can't deny the benefits of, of this new building. I think this building uh, has a pleasing appearance and I think that will, you know, will make it look more fitting in the years to come. I'm confident that, you know, 50, 75 years from now, this building will still be here and serving the citizens of Oshkosh. So it was really a good event. We had a pretty good turnout. And as you can see, it was really neat to see. We had Dave Patek come, who just recently uh, retired, as well as Jerry Conrad, another former public works director. A lot of great people. There were a lot of folks who had uh, previous city employees that showed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that it wasn't a very good weather day, but it was pe not. <laughs> people came out in spite of that. And a uh, nice turnout. Um, a lot of families came, uh, and as well as em uh, former employees. They wanted to see what the, what the new digs looked like. So mm -hmm. Mayor Cummings did the ribbon cutting and uh, our council members were there and a lot of people who were in, involved in the project from the get-go uh, and uh, former public works directors as you saw and a lot of pride in the facility and a lot of recognition that uh, this was something that was needed and you saw some of the old video of the old building and just uh, literally how inefficient it was and the demonstrations we had showed people how this facility was going to really give us payback in the long term for uh, mm -hmm for the community's investment in this facility. And so the demonstrations that you mentioned, they, we had, they had a, a refuse truck showing how they, you know, move the, the garbage can or the containers. They had a, uh, la a lateral camera. I think it was called a jetter. Yep. Um, so, and even the, the police, uh, the, the C -Cub. mobile command post, the C-Cub, yes. Uh, they, they were out there too for tours. So it just shows how huge that place is. Um, and you, you know, the amount of space and amount of efficiency that they're going to have there. So we're real excited about it. Uh, you know, we certainly wanted to, to show it off because this isn't something you're always going to see. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, you know, th that some people commented on the aesthetics and it's it's not just about that it looks nice, yes. but it was very important to the, the city's plan commission that it blend in well with the neighborhood mm -hmm. and that it, um, it looked uh, appropriate even for a public works facility which conjures up all these images of, of dirty and, and whatnot. And when you have garbage trucks and salt trucks, it is not going to look the most pleasant, but the whole idea was that it blended in well with Fox Valley Technical College and the commercial areas that we have nearby. Mm -hmm. And it was appropriate for the neighborhood so that it, it blended in well with the neighborhood. Uh, because we have to be good neighbors. So all of those things, we, we put it together and now it's here and we're excited about it. And uh, I know uh, Kevin Ewan, our manager of field operations is glad it's over because <laughs> now we can go back to his regular job, which is, is uh, 
managing streets and mm -hmm. uh, snow removal and sanitation and all those things that the public expects from us. And I, we got to give them credit. They, throughout the whole process, from moving from the old building to the phase one of the new building, as well as while phase two was being built, uh, all those services continued, and I don't think anybody even noticed a difference. So if, we got to give them credit. If you've ever remodeled your house and gone through, you know, trying to keep your family's life going while you're mm -hmm. remodeling, you know exactly what Kevin went through on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with uh, managing field operations for the city. Yes, yeah, so very excited about that. Uh, next item we want to get into here, uh, kind of a hot topic. People are talking about it. Uh, we did talk about it on, uh, I think, a, a recent episode of CMR, and it was just recently approved by council, was uh, the fishing issue at the boat launches. So currently there is no longer any fishing allowed at the boat launch docks. The boat launch docks themselves, yes. but that was something that uh, people had been uh, bringing to our attention, that there were some conflicts between boaters and uh, uh, anglers, people fishing, and it had gotten to the point where there were almost fisticuffs, police were called, mm. and so the docks have never really been intended for fishing, uh, the, the, the boating docks, the launching docks, so we just made it formal that, that fishing is prohibited. We did get some calls, to be honest with you, that people were not happy about it. We tried to explain to them that the reason was we wanted to avoid conflicts. It really is a safety issue. Someone uh, got hooked with a fishing line. Mm -hmm. The fishing lines were getting caught in boat props. So it was things like that. So the dock you're seeing here on, on, the, on the video is for boat launching only. So that's for boats. And then the fishing ones are for fishing Still only. available for fishing. Yes. Yeah, so the, the fishing docks you said. Um, so you're just because you're not able to fish at this boat launch, you can go down along the shore. I believe there's other docks that are available for you to be fishing on, You can too. see in the background here that there's a fishing dock over mm -hmm. there, and that's okay because not everybody has a boat. They can't fish. You know, they can't go out in the lake. And right. We want to make sure we accommodate those folks. But uh, whether you're at Steiger Park or downtown over by the, um, uh, by the Technical College or over at Rainbow Park or here at 24th Boat Launch, any of the boat launches, just stay away from the boat launch areas and you're going to be just fine. Yes, and so signs should be going up. They might already be up, so just make sure you're aware of that. Uh, next thing we want to talk about is another thing we actually mentioned in a recent episode of City Manager's Report is the Riverside parking lot. And I cannot believe how fast this project took place and is now completed and available for use. It is done. It's open. It's available for the public to use mm -hmm. uh, just in time for uh, the big summer events. Waterfest starts uh, this coming week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be ready for Waterfest, and it, it looks gorgeous, um, and it blends in well with everything. Uh, but now we've got a very functional parking lot. You know how bad it was uh, out there. It yes, was, it you, was. <laughs> it was like driving the surface of the moon is what it was like. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, and so it, we're very happy to have this completed parking lot. Um, and you know it does it meshes nicely with the other side of the parking lot which was pretty recently redone as well right we had done it in two phases mm -hmm. and then we we recognized some some parking needs that we needed to get addressed over at city center and but we wanted to make sure that the convention center and the leach amphitheater in riverside park still had adequate parking mm -hmm. these parking lots are really for those purposes and then the cp lot right across the street next to the fire station that's for other uses so some overflow for the convention center but we can use it for lease purposes and for other downtown parking. Excellent. And so the video we see here is right before it opened. So those cones are now gone. People can park there, uh, and we're happy to have that space. I'm pretty sure all the landscaping is done, too. Mm -hmm. So it is open and available for the public. And uh, we're so thankful for relatively nice weather this spring that enabled this project to get done uh, ahead of time. Yes. So I'm having to get out to Waterfest a little early and stake out a good spot in this lot. There you go. <laughs> Uh, next thing we want to talk about is uh, kind of a seasonal one. It's uh, you'll see the the guys out working pretty soon here is some street painting. Uh, and that's kind of happens every spring summerish time, right? It, it's a it's a summertime activity. Uh, you're not really going to be able to do much painting in the winter, so mm -hmm. you're going to see them out there. So from a safety standpoint, please look out for the workers because uh, we've got cones out there and and you can look for them. Uh, and also. Uh, you don't want to be careful. You don't want to get paint splattered on you or no. anything like that. And we were watching the video before the show, and I was like, "Wow, I've never, I've never actually seen it." You know, watching them do this. So it explained to us the guy in the front is doing the paint, and then we got a guy with a coffee can. Looks Just like looks he's like he's shaking watering his garden or something. Right. <laughs> what he's doing is he's putting in little sprinkles that are actually the reflective material that uh, you know, the paint's just regular traffic paint, 
but the sprinkles actually make that reflective uh, material uh, make it visible at night. Make it visible at night. So uh, you have somebody falling behind, put the little bit of a uh, pixie dust on the paint, <laughs> and then it makes it uh, safer for uh, for the traffic. And it it also helps it last a little longer. Okay. Yeah. So watch out for them. You'll see cones, uh, and just try and be aware that they're going to be they're going to be out and working at this time of year. You got it. Uh, so now it's that time of the show where viewers have the chance to ask their city manager anything they want about things that are happening right here in your city. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the question mark is this week. question this week is why is there sometimes a truck parked on the bridge making it only one lane and I actually it's a good question because oftentimes I go home for lunch and there's a, a big orange or yellow truck sitting on the bridge so what is that all about well it's uh, number one uh, the bridges are actually maintained by the state they're owned by the state so uh, we don't uh, maintain them ourselves so if you see a truck out there it's probably not going to be a city truck it's probably going to be a truck of a contractor for the state the county may be working on behalf of the state mm -hmm. or the state department of transportation itself um, anytime you have a bridge that has to be open for for boating traffic um, first thing you got to do is uh, at the beginning of the season make sure the lifts are working okay so they could be out there checking to make sure that the, uh, the mechanics of the of the bridge opening are working okay um, but then there's also some very restrictive uh, criteria that they have to follow when they're doing any maintenance on the bridge so it's more it's a lot more care and caution is put into it on a bridge than it is on a, a regular city street so mm -hmm. you may see it actually close for a little longer than you would see uh, like you saw the, the paint crews out there yes once paint crews are done it's dry they're out of there uh, with the bridge it's a little more uh, deliberate before they get it all done so okay. usually it's it's seasonal mm -hmm. you're going to see at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season You'll seldom see it right during the summer unless something happens that they, they got to get in there right away and do it. But okay. a lot of folks get frustrated because, my gosh, the bridge, is, you know, the bridge needs to be open because it transports, it funnels a lot of traffic <laughs> both sides. So, um, but generally they're doing some very specified type of maintenance that they uh, have to take that little extra care. Excellent. Very interesting also that the bridge is not under the city's, you know, uh, designation. So I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, the bridges itself, the bridges themselves are actually under the county. So right. very cool to know. Great question. Uh, if you'd like to send a question to Mark, you can email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it on the next episode of CMR. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the city council meeting agenda for this Tuesday, June 9th. We'll be right back. Want to know what's happening in local government? Stay in the know with City of Oshkosh Government Meetings, live on TV City Cable 10, online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, and on Community Radio WOCT 101.9 FM. Miss the live coverage? No problem. Catch replays on City Cable 10. Stream online from oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, or visit youtube.com forward slash Oshkosh Community Media Services. Welcome back to your City Manager's Report. Thanks for joining us. It's that time of the show to take a look at the City Council meeting agenda for this Tuesday, June 9th. Uh, so we're going to get right into it, Mark. The first thing we want to mention here is that the Common Council will be meeting at 4.45 p.m. for a workshop on the health insurance program. Uh, maybe you can uh, give us a little overview of that, what that's all about. Well, one of the directives that Council gave me was to look for ways to help save on health insurance costs because they've been continuing to rise over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And we're self-funded, which means that uh, we sort of create a, a mini insurance company business within the city. It's pretty common for cities of our size, uh, but uh, we've had some rough couple of years with the costs and everything. So right. uh, we're going to be reporting back to council on where our health insurance fund stands, where some of the trends are, 
with health insurance, uh, and specifically where uh, the Affordable Care Act may be impacting us a little bit down the road. Things we're doing to keep costs down, um, we're going to be happy to report that our insurance fund is rebounding a little bit. So we're uh, going to be reporting on that and what that may, uh, uh, as we're looking at our crystal ball for 2016, what it may mean for, for our uh, upcoming budget. Great. So the self-insured fund is, it's healthy, for lack of a better word. We were saying that in our planning session here. Good way to put it. Uh, yeah, it, it is. Now, it wasn't. We we had some very good years, and then the last couple, uh, from about 2012 through now, we were having some really lean times, and the mm -hmm. fund balance and that went down. It's been restored with some things that we've done in recent years. Uh, we've done some cost-contained measures, and uh, so we're happy that we're making some progress. And one of the areas that we think we're going to even have better progress this year is our employee health clinic yes. that we're working on with the uh, county and the Oshkosh Area School District. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to hearing the updates on that. Uh, next thing we want to talk about uh, is, before the meeting as well, the presentation of Committee on Aging Award. Uh, so we're actually going to be honoring someone at this meeting. Yes, the, um, the Committee on Aging typically likes to honor um, longstanding members for their contributions and Lurton Blassing Game, uh, who's been a member of the committee for a number of years, is going to be honored for all the work he's done. Uh, you may recall a couple years ago we honored Lurton for his uh, efforts on his vision for the river walk. So mm -hmm. Lurton's been an active community member for a long time. This is really to honor him for what he's been contributing to the Committee on Aging, which has been significant. And uh, we're happy to be doing that. And uh, uh, Mark Zemer, our Senior Services Director, will be there along with uh, uh, Mayor Cummings to, uh, to honor Lurton for all his uh, contributions. Well, that's very exciting. To, you know, it'll be great to see Lurton. Uh, you definitely see him around, is what I hear. So I'll have to make sure I you know, get the chance to meet him at some point. <laughs> yes. Uh, next item we want to talk about, Resolution 15-281. Uh, approved purchase pursuant to sole source exception of seven thermal imaging cameras for the Oshkosh Fire Department. And this is at about $49,000, uh, but you have something uh, to tell us about that cost. Yeah, the cost is $49,000, but our fire department was successful in getting what's called a Fire Act grant, which covers 90% of that cost. So we're only going to be paying about uh, a little less than $5,000 for this. Okay. So uh, there's a picture of a thermal imaging camera. Uh, so that's what they are, huh? That's what they are. They really, what they do is they can help uh, literally uh, the fire department see through smoke in buildings to identify um, where hot spots and fires are mm -hmm. or where people may be in there. If they're in a search and rescue situation inside a burning building, they can find people through this. And this, uh, this is not the one we currently have. This is really a more of a model of what we're going to be getting. Uh, they're now in color so you can distinguish between um, the different colors and what they mean. Uh, a redder means hot, obviously. Bluer means cold, which uh, was actually closer to uh, somebody else might being there, so mm -hmm. you can find people better. Right now, you have to distinguish between shades of uh, black, white, and gray mm -hmm. to find uh, somebody. This is much easier to identify somebody in a fire situation, and uh, we put them on all our trucks so that regardless of where the fire situation might be, that we're going to be in there and be able to, to rescue somebody. So literally, these cameras save lives. Very important tool of the Oshkosh Fire Department. So we're very happy to have that grant to help cover that. Uh, another thing, uh, item number six, resolution 15-282, uh, is a purchase of two Quint fire engine ladder trucks for the fire department. Uh, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about, about that as well. Sure. Well, unfortunately, you know, these uh, uh, the, we don't have a grant for this one, and it's $1.7 million. Unfortunately, no grant for that. But we had, we'd budgeted over the next two years $2 million, so we're actually saving close to a quarter of a million dollars with this. Um, we have a very good relationship with... Uh, Pierce Manufacturing, which is a subsidiary of Oshkosh yes. Corporation, mm -hmm. and we, they work very closely with us to get the specifications just right to meet our needs. And uh, uh, because we've got that relationship, um, we work out uh, making sure that the equipment is exactly what our firefighters need for their safety. Um, it's good to have consistent equipment because when you're in a fire situation, you want to know that you're looking in the same place and turn in the same uh, right. lever in a truck and finding this. Um, we use quints, which are actually a combination of a fire engine and a ladder. Um, some 
uh, fire departments have ladder companies. We have an engine ladder company, for, and that's why we use these quints. So they're very specialized type of equipment that, kind that of Pierce. Kind one package type one of One big all-in-one type of thing that okay. Pierce does a very good job of, of making those. So mm -hmm. um, they give us specific discounts by ordering them together. So we're ordering the 2015 and the 2016 truck at the same time making an advance down payment. So we're getting a lot of discounts that they work with us to get to save the taxpayers money. And as a result, we're gonna save about a quarter of a million That's by doing this. That's excellent to hear. Smart spending on, on that behalf yeah. for sure. That's part of it. Wonderful. Uh, next item we wanna talk about, Resolution 15-286, approve agreement with Brown and Caldwell for stormwater management plan. Uh, for so a watershed that might not be as familiar, it's the Gallops and Merritt's Creek watershed. Uh, so maybe you can tell us, first of all, where exactly is this watershed? Well, I have to look at the map myself with some <laughs> of these more obscure ones, but we have 120 watersheds, so I don't have them memorized. Mm -hmm. um, you may hear about Glatch Creek, uh, because we just did a study on that uh, during the for the bulk of the airport a few years ago. Gallops and Merritt's is, uh, squeezed just uh, south of uh, the airport, but it goes all the way out to by Plainview truck stop and then kind of snakes its way going northeast over to the lake. Uh, and you can see it here in the blue and uh, it directly impacts the airport. It directly impacts a lot of the areas along Washburn um, as we are making your way up and down Highway 41 and then across the airport. So it's a, it's a pretty good sized watershed. It's not as developed as other areas, but when you consider the airport and uh, Plainview, uh, the Plainview area, mm -hmm. there's quite a bit of development here. So each individual watershed has to be analyzed separately, and that's what we're doing here. And this is the first step into a, a stormwater project. So we've seen all these other projects, and they all started with, with this you know, study. Right. No, we can't really do a project without this type of study. Mm -hmm. So we'll identify if we do need any projects here. Excellent. Uh, after that, we've got a few items dealing with the aviation aerospace uh, business cluster study. Uh, any updating on that? Any kind of funding news or anything? Well, it's not. We, we had talked about the funding at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Now these are the intergovernmental agreements to make it all happen. The Department of Defense grant goes to East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. Uh, and the Department of Defense felt that with our aviation cluster, we should, for the region, include the other airports in the region. And so uh, Brown County, Austin Straubel Airport, uh, as well as Whitman, are both getting some extra work done. Mm -hmm. So we have an agreement with, um, with uh, the individual airports to pay their matching share of the grants so that the city isn't incurring these costs. So Great. we're working very well with them and uh, we're focusing on the study. Um, the targets for a maintenance repair facility, as well as advanced manufacturing. Excellent. Well, great news, and we're happy to see that, that moving along. Uh, another thing we want to talk about here, item number 19, ordinance 15-295, is the creation of bicycle lanes, the lane reduction, or as we call it, the road diet on Murdoch Avenue from Wisconsin Street to Sheridan Street. So what's the update on this? Well, it's, it continues to be a controversial issue. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of strong opinions out there. And one of the things we wanted to do, because this is really about public safety, that's what we're talking about here. And uh, one of the examples that our transportation director, Jim Collins, had mentioned was that um, Murdoch has very similar uh, traffic volumes as uh, Commercial Street and Nina. Mm -hmm. uh, Commercial Street and Nina uh, is very close by, so we sent our OCMS crews up there and I said, let's see what it looks like on Commercial Street and Nina. So, and we got to put our GoPro to use. So yeah, this is so actually on the dashboard of our van. So while uh, Scott Williams is driving up and down uh, Commercial Street and Nina, you get an idea. You've got the middle lane there that allows traffic to get out of the, the, the flow of traffic to make turns in either direction. You've got the bike lane on um, both sides. The bike lane is just one option that you have with a, with a road diet, mm -hmm. but that's certainly there. And uh, you can see that uh, the dedicated traffic going in either direction has one lane to go each yes. way. And the belief is that because the traffic volumes are comparable that you can get through. Now this, uh, Scott, was able to take these uh, photos right around what I call early rush hour. Mm -hmm. Schools letting out, very similar to over by Oshkosh North High. So we wanted to give people an idea of what it looks like. Um, you know, there is some traffic here and you, the, the crossing guard actually was slowing things down here. Mm -hmm. But you get an idea, this is about as worse as it's gonna get during, during a school time. Right. A little backup, but you can see that there's areas for car turning, areas for bicycles, uh, all the features that you're looking for 
with this type of situation. So very interesting to kind of get a little bit of a view of what it could possibly look like. But like you said, there still is quite a bit of uncertainty as far as what exactly will happen with that one. You know, you may have an opinion on it and we want you to understand the facts versus the myths. And these are the facts. This is what it looks like. You'll see a dedicated turning lane here, which allows you to see down the street a lot better before you make your turn. That's really what we're talking about. That's the primary purpose of this road diet is to allow turning traffic to have a much better uh, view. And as you can see, as our vehicle here is making its turn or preparing to make its turn, you can see down the street a lot better. It's now safe to proceed so you can make the left. That's what we're talking about here. Great, looking forward to, to seeing what else happens with this one. Uh, next item, resolution 15-299 is to approve professional service agreement with Walker Parking Consultants to do a downtown parking study. Explain that to us. This is about us um, doing a uh, central city uh, plan, update our downtown action plan, mm -hmm. but parking was a missing component of the last time. So this time we're going to do a parking study concurrent with the central city action plan. A lot of people have different opinions on uh, what kind of parking problem how deep our parking problem is, and where parking should be. This study will study all those and, and make some recommendations to us on that as well. Great, next item, approved capital improvement plan policy. It's kind of a prioritization process a little bit. Yeah, our uh, um, Long Range Finance Committee yes. had taken this up and to help us prioritize projects when we give them to council. So uh, this, uh, committee's been looking at it and this will help me prioritize projects which will help me explain those projects to council. Great and then the last item that we wanted to talk about we'll breeze through here is approved council member and mayor salary increases. Uh, give us a brief overview of that one. Well just before Mayor Tower left office he suggested that the council take a look at uh, council and mayor wages because they haven't been looked at uh, since uh, uh, before any of the other council members were on so he suggested they look at that. They formed a committee, uh, did some studies of different communities, and are recommending a salary uh, adjustment, not for this term. They can't change salaries in their current term. Mm -hmm. It's for the, whoever succeeds them in office uh, or if, if, if they run for re-election, but you can't change it during the term of office. It's next. So council is going to discuss that and determine if, uh, if they've been, it's been about eight years now since there's been a raise, so the council will consider that. Great. That's going to conclude our uh, meeting council agenda items. Again, the city council meeting is this Tuesday, June 9th at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on City Cable 10 or online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. Uh, you can watch us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all your community and government programming and updates. Or check out our YouTube channel for government meeting replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Rollup, you can send it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us. Uh, and before we close the show, we want to take just a minute to think about and honor someone who we recently lost, a very important person in the Oshkosh community, Jeremy Monette. Uh, maybe, Mark, you can say a few words for us. Well, when you go back to 2014, some of our major accomplishments, there were two major accomplishments uh, that Jeremy was very much a part of. Mm -hmm. One of them was the uh, development of the Aviation Business Park. And... Uh, uh, he was present at the uh, groundbreaking, but he wasn't. Uh, he was our air support he for that. He was in the air at that. He event. was in the air. This <laughs> wasn't Jeremy's plane. We didn't get Jeremy's plane there, but uh, he was there and, and arranged all that because he felt very passionately. He lobbied the county board to uh, consider uh, developing the aviation industrial park. So this, and he was the only private business person that really got engaged with it. So Jeremy gets a lot of credit for that. Definitely. And then of course, Go EDC was the other one. He was one of the founding members. Uh, he uh, was a member of the executive committee. And I would, I would say that Go EDC may not even exist today if it wasn't for people, uh, dedicated people like Jeremy who helped move that forward. So I certainly appreciate we're gonna miss him. Mm -hmm. So two of the top 10 items that we had of 2014, he was largely responsible for. Another thing that was uh, one of his babies was the bridge lights. Uh, and he was a big fan and a fundraiser for the community beautif beautification. Um, and so in memoriam of him, we have changed the, the bridge lights to the Sonics yellow uh, to honor him. So we're really gonna miss Jer Jeremy Monet and uh, I guess rest in peace. So thank you so much for joining us on City Manager's Report. We'll see you next time.